Okay, what we're going to talk about today is kind of, and you guys can come up some if you want. I mean, I'm, I'm less, I don't think I'll buy it. Because this camera's fine. I mean, you say that if you want, but I'm not going to shoot. Hopefully, I'm going to shoot it. But, um, but that way we get a little bit more kind of look at things. Um, how many of you have ARs? How many of you think that? Or, or AKs or any rifle magazines and things? Uh, how many of you are planning on buying that? Uh, I, one thing I want to say about this whole setup is it's not really AR specific. You know, you can, and really, you know, if you use a shotgun, uh, we're going to try to uh, just, these are some things. Uh, this isn't what we'd call a complete loadout. It's more or less something that, let's say condition yellow, something you might want to, you've got a little bit of concern, um, you know, you want something to keep in your car, you're not really uh, worried about all out. That's a whole different subject, you know, with the salt vest and things like that. So, uh, but what we're going to talk about today is, and this can apply though to your total load, loadout, and I'm going to just kind of include that uh, when we kind of get to the end. Uh, of course, first thing is whatever kind of rifle you choose, this is a head down um, rifle, really, you know, and if you've watched anything I've done, I really like the guy. The guys that head down are here right now. Uh, just excellent quality rifles made right here in Georgia, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but great rifle, you know, you got your ammunition, you know, that um, 5.56, or if you're using uh, AK 47 style, you know, you got your, or AK 74. Uh, great ammunition choices, it's inexpensive. One of the things I will say about ammunition is, and of course keeping the load out, I wouldn't necessarily have a whole lot of ammunition laid back uh, for just a load out. I mean, I would for a load out. I wouldn't just for a grab and go bag, just to kind of keep with you. And it's, I guess it's more of a just in case bag. Since we're talking about a bag, there's a couple of choices. Something like this small bag that has actually some mag pouches right up front, can get you kind of organized. This is a nice thing to just have. It's easy, it's portable. You can keep this in your vehicle. Uh, I had a, an incident recently um, that a young man, uh, we, we were with a church group and some of the guys are high risk. They've got some things going on, you know, with uh, getting involved in drugs and different things. And so a guy called me, he goes, if I don't have $300 by this time, these guys are gonna kill me. And I said, look, I'll come up, I'm gonna come up and meet you. Drove to the area, it was a really bad area. And of course, you know, in the back seat, and this would be this kind of situation I'm talking about. In the back seat, you know, I have an AR, I had actually an AR pistol with the brace on it, had it sitting back there, had my loadout bag. Not assault vest and all that stuff, just if I get into trouble, I've got a backup. And, uh, it was funny when the guy got in the car and I was getting him out of the area and uh, he looked back there and he went, whoa! I said, man, I am not going to, I'm going to be prepared for whatever. And he started laughing. He goes, good. He goes, good. And uh, ended up, we worked out, we, I helped him work out the situation. But, you know, that's just a, that's not anything civil unrest or anything else. You know, it could just be a situation uh, that you want to face or that you need a little bit more than just your concealed carry option. Right, bag first. Get you a good tough bag. Now, I will say another thing, and boots or good sturdy shoes. Listen, summertime I wear flip flops almost constantly. I mean, it, it, you know, a lot of people laugh at me. They'll say, You got tactic flops on, you know, when I'm doing the videos or whatever. My range is just right down from the house. So, you know, I go down there and, and shoot, and sometimes I just leave my flip flops on. Uh, but a good sturdy pair of boots is really important, or sturdy shoes. If you don't have them on, at least have them in your vehicle, have them close by. You know, in a uh, you know some kind of bad situation, it could be debris, it could be other things. So, a good pair of boots with socks. Okay, so you got your bag. Now you got your gun. The next thing you're going to need is some magazines, obviously. Now, for a full loadout, we're talking about probably about seven magazines, six for your your pouch and everything. But for something like this, really, a couple of 30 round magazines, and you got one for your rifle. You're really trying to get out of a situation. Right? You're not, you know, you're, you're getting out of the situation. So, the thing is, something like this is light, light, it's easy to carry, easy to keep compact. So, I'm just going to say a couple of magazines. Of course, you know, you can do more if you choose to. Uh, and then, 
you should have your concealed carry. And one of the things I want to say about that is because I know a lot of people, um, of course, here in Georgia, it's really, it's really easy. It's really nice the way they've got the law set up here. In South Carolina, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, but, you know, having concealed carry, some people say, well, I don't want to be on the list. Well, I don't want to blah, blah. You know what? If you're looking on the internet at guns, you're already on the list. You know, if you're like me, I, I click on this gun or bag or ammunition, and then I go to my email, and over here's an ad from what I just looked at. You know, they, they know what you're looking at. Which, you know what? Don't hide behind that. Stand up. Say, you know what? I, I, it is what it is. I'm American. I have freedoms. This is legal. I have nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let that push you. So second is, is if you are considering not getting a concealed carry because you're on the list, listen, if you are in a situation where you're out and about, especially in a bug out situation, and you have a firearm on you, and you don't have your concealed carry permit, do you want to go to jail? So, you know, you can, you can fuss and argue with the cops or whatever that, you know, well, I have a right, I have a right. I, I just think it's worth it, you know. So we have to abide by the law. Uh, it's, it's the best path, okay? So, next thing is, because you got your magazines. Um, of course, ammunition should be loaded in your magazines. I mean, that, it should already be ready. This is something that's ready to go ready to rock. So go ahead and have your ammunition loaded. Uh, a little key about ammunition, I mean some of you if you can afford to go out and you know load up on um, you know 10,000 rounds of ammunition that's great. Me what I do is now if I get a bonus or something I'll, I'll get a, a can of ammunition but typically every week going somewhere I'm going, to some, I'm going to a gun shop I'm going to some place at Walmart even, grab a box of ammunition just before long, you'll be amazed at how it adds up. I mean, it really adds up. Uh, but guys, it's just a poor club of that ammunition. So I highly recommend, uh, and really for your home loadout, I, would, I mean, 1,000 rounds is minimum. Um, okay, now another thing too is, is a good sling. It's something that a lot of times we kind of, uh, we don't really, this isn't a sling, that's a bell. Okay, uh, a good sling, a good sling system. And, uh, this is excellent because if you're if you don't have a sling system on your gun and you have to use both hands, you've got to set your gun down. That's not good. Take your sling, slide your gun back, you've got both hands free. Or if you're going around, if you, if you happen to need to wear it over an extended period of time, a good sling is important. Well listen, I for years I didn't have a sling on my rifle because I hated you had to thread it through that stupid little you know thing and I'm like threading it through and then I have to take it off and threading it through. But once they came up with the QD systems, man, it's been beautiful ever since. So you know you can just clip a clip. Uh, but having a good sling is important. Um, uh, and a good belt. And we of course I mentioned that. But having a good sturdy belt, you should have one for your concealed carry already. You really should. Uh, this is your platform. This is really important. Any kind of gear you're going to put on here, you need to have a good sturdy belt. Uh, this Condor belt is excellent. An instructor belt is just a good choice. Uh, now, one thing I do want to mention is a parts kit. And I, I didn't even ask uh, Steve if they had it, but uh, having a good parts kit for whatever you, whatever handgun, rifle, whatever, especially with ARs. Uh, AKs not so much, but still AKs can have problems too. I've had them. Uh, but having a good parts kit, they're cheap, they're easy especially in a long-term situation. This is important. Well, following parts kits, a good cleaning kit. This is an Otis kit. It's excellent. It, it curls around. The U.S. military is using these. Just a great system to have. Um, and you, well, I didn't get into the big bag, but I will. Okay. And then um, having a good multi-tool. And if you've ever, if you're ever like me, I go out to the range. I'm sitting out there. I need to do something. I don't have my tools. I, you have to keep a multi-tool right in your bag at all times, with your range bag or whatever. It's amazing. You, know, you can get through a lot with just a multi-tool. And this is, I'm not really doing this necessarily in order because really all these things are so important, but uh, a good flashlight, whether you're using it with your hand, just having that light available. I keep flashlights with me 24-7, well not 24-7, well I guess I do because I keep them inside my bed. But a, a good quality flashlight for EDC, but a good light for a tactical light. And this one has a mount to it, so I can attach it to my rifle if I need to. I can use it this way if I need to. 
however, I, you know, whatever the, the circumstance is, keeping a flashlight. Really, guys, one thing I ever put on my rifle beside optics or sights <coughs> is a good flashlight. Because if you're not careful, you just get all this stuff on there and it just gets heavy. It's, and that's just my deal. I don't, uh, the AR-15 is a very light rifle system. And, you know, why load it down on a bunch of stuff? Uh, med kit. I keep a blowout kit in my truck at all times. I mean, and in fact, it's one of the uh, trauma kits. You shoot a lot, I'm telling you guys, you really should invest in a good first aid trauma kit. Uh, even with tat cat tourniquets. Um, you know, you may, you may not be shot, but your friend or somebody, you know, down from you. And you can help them. It can save a life. I highly recommend you keeping a first aid kit in your vehicle, period. Something that's really adequate, not a little, you know, like this would be a nice one, but not like a little Walmart white little band-aid boo-boo kit. That's not, a, <laughs> that's not a first aid kit. That's, that's what my little boy likes, you know, when he scrapes his knee. But um, another thing too is, and this is this is not super vital, but this is a what they call a dump pouch. You can strap this on and then it opens up. And when you finish with your magazines, get your magazines in there. Uh, this keeps you from losing them. And, um, in fact, in the movie Black Hawk Down, in Mogadishu, the, uh, it was one of the things that caused our U.S. military to start issuing dump pouches. Because what happened was that the, the aluminum magazines were really made to be disposable. And, and as you fire, you just throw it down and keep going. And so that's what they were doing. They were you know, making a retreating action. They were just dropping the magazines. Well, they finally got to a rally point. They were running out of ammunition. They said, hey, we need some ammunition. They had a, a, a helicopter come in and do a drop. And when they got the, the, the ammunition, they opened it up, and it was all in strip clips. There were no magazines. And so, you know, they had a couple here. I mean, they were just fighting to get those things into place. So magazines are extremely important or you have a single-shot rifle. Um, so dump pouch retains your magazines. Plus, you can use this to carry things, pop in there, you know, it's a good foraging bag, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of uses for these. Good pair of gloves, optional, but still can save your hands. Now, um, ball cap and watch cap, again, not into the world, but it does help cover your head. Uh, if you're out. And then a good pair of safety glasses or sunglasses to keep your eyes. Uh, you know, in a down and dirty situation, maybe it's some kind of lone wolf attack, we'll just put it that way. Uh, you know, having, you know, there may be a, a dirty, some kind of bomb, some kind of improvised whatever. You know, who knows what could happen. It could be a storm. It could be in a tornado. It could be, of course, you know, different things like that. Having eye protection and protecting your eyes is important and a bandana to keep if you have to breathe. So these are kind of things that if we have a bag like this we're already concerned, it doesn't hurt to, to have those things inside. Now, good optic, this is a little EOTech. Um, I'm a big fan of Trigicon myself, I really like ACOG trip with ACOG scopes, but Vortex, there's a lot of different ones. If you're gonna do that, you need to invest in some extra batteries. And one of the easy ways with a lot of the lights is to get on eBay. If especially it's watch batteries, you can get a run up real cheap. Then go into a store and pay in so much per piece. Uh, that's what I do for any optics I have lights on or uh, well, my, my, you know, my CR123s for these lights. But for optics, you know, batteries, really cheap, you can get them you know, 10, 20 at a time, put them back, and uh, you're in need. Me, I'm notorious for leaving my light on in my uh, optic or whatever. Just Then I look at it and I think, oh shoot, why is it working? So having that backup is important. Uh, backup sights on your rifle, it's, that's key, that's critical. Um, you put backup sights on your rifle because even though this here takes good quality and shield and everything else, the battery may not go dead, but this thing may fall and crack. The electronics may just be done, it may just be a dud. Don't take a chance. Um, so backup sights are critical. Okay, uh, we have any, oh, I forgot the knife. This is a little cable, this is an odd knife. 
good fixed blade knife. Now, maybe not necessarily this large. This would be more for a loadout, but maybe something a little smaller to keep in your bag. One of the things about fixed blade is, and what I like is a survival fighting combination. There are some knives that are fighting. That's what they are. They're fighting knives. Not too good on uh, survival. And there's some survival knives that really aren't that great on fighting. Uh, so what I like is a full tang knife, and this one is fairly thick because you can actually do some extra things. Use this as a tool. I mean, this was one of man's first tools right here for the knife. And it's one that we've used since the beginning, and uh, it's a very vital tool. You know, it's good to have a good pocket knife, but even this really nice, this is Zero Tolerance 350, uh, it doesn't match the abilities that a good fixed blade knife does. Every day, yeah, I'm carrying my knife, I'm carrying my, my uh, flash, little, little flashlight, you know, the other things that I carry, but this is over, you need to be carrying those as well, seal carry and all that. But a good fixed blade knife, guys, whether you do a loadout or not, uh, the only thing I would, and here's a, this is a nice range bag right here. In fact, I've got one similar to this. It's green. I love it. And uh, you, you have all the pouches. You can put your magazines in it. There's even a back pouch here. In fact, Steve said they sell a lot of these bags just because they're so popular. But uh, there's a lot of gear you can put in here. Something like this would be excellent. You may not necessarily always carry your rifle in it. You may just have it in the back of your car with all your gear in it. But, it's right there. You can throw your rifle in, stick it in the bag. You got it if you ever need it. With this, of course, you'll have to have a separate bag for your rifle. But just a couple of ideas, you know, and options. So, any questions or any ideas or any additions? Anybody got anything? How about like a watch or a compass navigation uh, tools? That would I would get more into that with more of a go bag or survival bag. Um, this is. See, to me, and you're right, I've got that on my, uh, uh, in fact, we talked about doing it, I go back, and that is. But uh, just for encountering defensive situations, you know, we can get into water, food, and all that, but that's going to be more for your, you know, your getting home bag. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, now, cater this every you to. And the, the whole reason for this, um, even talking about this, is to give, it's not to say this is what you got to have. But to give you ideas to think, okay, you know what, here's, this would be good, oh yeah, that. I mean, I watched, uh, last night, I was just kind of making sure that I was covering a lot of the bases, and I was watching a couple of videos, and uh, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I need to remember that, or I need to think about that. So, so that's not a bad suggestion, but it's just, you know, we're focused on. So we're, we're more focused on like a local event, right. quote unquote. Just and to kind of get through it and survive it. Right. Not necessarily that you know something's going on, but that there's some things that have been going on. And, you know, you're kind of like, hmm, that's like for us, man, after we had our break in. You know, and that was a different kind of event, but it changed my mind a lot. Sure. Then we had a home invasion right behind us at six in the morning, mm -hmm. um, you know, where they went into this neighborhood. And in fact, uh, you know, the guy was home and he came down and the guys, he ran him out with a gun, you know, but he didn't, uh, just that, that kind of situation, is, you know, and it puts you on alert. It makes you think, okay, it's so like the Saturday following our break in, we had two guys on our property stealing metal off of a, there was a place down where we had some metal stacked up and they were just taking it. And you just, <laughs> you know, you're kind of like, really? Um, so, and then, of course, you know, there could be some unrest. There could be some things happening, some kind of political situation that come up, and, and the, the air is charged. And I think it's not necessarily this. It's just, I'm going to just carry a little extra. But I'm not going to carry my whole, you know, Bug plate out, carrier, my mag pouches, and all the stuff. Now, and there's a time for that. Mm. Uh, but see, like a buddy of mine, this is the problem with carrying stuff in your vehicle, of course, you guys fully aware of this, but a good friend of mine, Army Ranger for 24 years, great guy, worked for the police department for a number of years. He carried his plate carrier, everything with him all the time. And rifle, whatever, he always had it with him in, his, in the back of his truck. Well, he walked into Lowe's in Charlotte, just walked in, 10 minutes, came out, and was gone. They had broken the lock, got in there, took it off. 
And um, he said, "You said we were, he said we were not in there ten minutes." Mm. Uh, so that's another thing about bumper stickers, things you have on your vehicle. You have a lot of Second Amendment stuff on there, or military. Uh, that's a target. It attracts attention. Yeah. So uh, you know, you just have to uh, have to be smart. So, uh, but you know, yeah, this is just mainly for you know things you start having. I mean, if they're shooting in the street or something like that, well, I'm gonna have my chest rig and all that stuff. You know? But uh, this is something that I can take this bag, you know, I can go around with it. Of course, I can't. I won't be able to necessarily do this around town, you know. But um, I've got it handy. I've got my bag. I'm good to go. Uh, if something does happen, okay, I can address it. If nothing happens, we deal. You know. But any other questions? Comments? Yes. Go ahead. How much is your big bag? I don't know. <laughs> I got it from next next door and they have them over there. So go next door and come back to them. Yeah, it's fifty seven ninety five. Fifty seven ninety five. Yeah, and these are detachable. Who's the buyer? Uh Condor. Condor. Okay. So uh, in terms of optics, obviously you'd rather invest in a EOTech or a treating bond you have something uh, more expensive that's more durable. Um, would you just go run iron sights? versus um, just buying a cheap um, optic, or would you run a cheaper optic until you can um, invest in something like a Trigicon or a EOTech? That's a good question. Um, for one thing, you, you don't, I mean, I, I have a yeah. EOTech and a Trigicon, but the thing that, that these do is they have a proven, you know, military contract track record of things, but you know what, they're expensive. I mean, you can buy uh, almost a new rifle for what? Uh, in fact, I just bought an, an ACOG and I got it for a really good deal. I probably I could afford it uh, because it's just expensive. But um, but here's this is what I'll offer you. I, you know, I understand. You know, the one problem with most of your cheap optics is the glass isn't all that great, so you don't get any clarity. The second thing is the mounts aren't all that stable, so you're not going to hold zero. So to be honest with you, you really don't even really. It's probably a detriment to have that optic. Because you may think, you know, oh, there it is, and you're like, I'm having, a, I'm having an M16 inches to the right. Yeah. You know, so that's going to be a real, your, your irons would definitely be a better option. Uh, iron sights are critical. And shooting with irons, I, I was shooting yesterday, um, we were shooting at 100 yards, have a steel target out. And even with irons, you know, pulling with, squeezing the trigger, bang, 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 bang. You know, and, but you need to practice with your irons even if you have optics. But here's the thing about optics. They did some studies recently with the U.S. military, and uh, they studied the, the advantage of optics. Is, is that really an advantage? And so they took a lot of the different uh, cases that were going on in Afghanistan, and with forces, obviously, we're fighting without optics versus forces with optics, the advantages, and it's overwhelming uh, with the optics. What I would recommend is buying a good medium priced, like a Vortex. And what I would also recommend is getting maybe a Spitfire that has the reticle in it. So if your batteries go dead, if your electronics crap out or whatever, you still got a edge reticle. That's what I love about Trigicon is there's no batteries. I mean, they've got some models now that have batteries. No batteries. It's tritium and it's, and then it's got fiber optic. So, most of your real competitive shooters, they'll say spend as much on your optic as you do on your rifle. Well, you know what, that's for people that have a lot of you know, money, extra money. Uh, but I will say this, you can afford to do it. And I, I bought my first ACOG 14 years ago and I've never regretted it, not one day. So, and over 14 years, how much was that really, you know? Still expensive. <laughs> Other questions? Well, I know one good, uh, so I've heard value price optic is the Bushnell TR25. Yes. TRS25. Uh, it's about, I think they're on sale at Palmetto State Armory for like $65 right now. And uh, for the money, I've heard it's really excellent. Uh, clear glass, clear sight picture, um, good mount. So I would look into that. They, I, they are good optics. Uh, that primary arms, which 
I will tell you, I got a buddy that has primary arms optics. They're pretty inexpensive. But, man, those guys, they get rabid loyalty. I mean, it's funny. I'll talk about Vortex. They're like, oh, what about primary arms? You know, they're just, that's just good. You know, I'm like, okay. You know, I'm just, I'm reviewing this. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about primary arms. They're good. Uh, but that's a fairly inexpensive optic that, but if you can get the one with the edge reticle, I just really recommend it. I mean, I like the sparks, and they hold up well, and I beat them on tables and throw my rifle down, you know, doing all that stuff, and they held zero. Even with the, but, you know, the thing, the variable is, is electronics can fail. So you just have to decide. You know, it's like even in this, you know, CO Tech's expensive, but a lot of them, have, you know, electronics have failed. So just the backup sites are important. Okay, any other questions? I like to. Yeah, you guys, I talk all the time, so I like to hear from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we were laughing earlier, so that's the term here, so talk. Any other questions, though? Okay, well, I really appreciate you guys being here and uh, being so attentive. Uh, you know, please catch me in there. I'll just be hanging out. Uh, if you have any specific questions, or if I'm talking to one or two, y'all come on up. Don't, uh, don't think I'm going to wait. It's maybe a while. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Good stuff. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Be strong. Be a good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. <laughs>